calibrating your monitor, what you need, why you need it, and how to do it. Welcome to the Visual Center. I'm Carlos, and it's here we talk all about photography and visual art. In previous videos, I talked about what color management is, and I also talked about calibration. So in this video, I wanted to walk you through step-by-step step how to calibrate your monitor. Having a calibrated monitor is really important. You don't want to spend hours and hours editing images and realize you were editing the wrong colors. So today, I'm going to walk you through how to calibrate this MacBook Pro. Now keep in mind that if you don't have a MacBook Pro and you have something else, the steps are still the same. So what do you need to get started? The first thing you need is a calibration device or a colorimeter. The one I'll be showing you today is the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. This is a device that sits on your computer screen and will actually measure how your screen is outputting color. The other thing you'll need is the software that goes with this. It's a free download. Uh, the one that goes with the i1 Display Pro is called i1 Profiler. Now, if it's your first time downloading the software, make sure you have all your files saved because it's gonna make you restart the computer. Another thing you wanna make sure of is if you're calibrating a laptop like I am, you wanna make sure that it's fully charged or you have the power plugged in. Once the software is installed and the computer starts up again, you're gonna to wanna to open up i1 Profiler. Let's take a look at the program. Now, when you first open up the program, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a bunch of demos over here. You're gonna see a bunch of red question marks along here. Let's go ahead and plug in the colorimeter. So you're just gonna take the USB and you're gonna plug it into your computer. Now this can take a second. What we're looking for are green check marks that lets us know that we can get started with our profiling. You'll see over here, there's no longer a demo. So now we can do display profiling. Now the i1 profiler comes with basic settings and advanced settings. I'm gonna take you through just the basic settings today. So we're gonna make sure we're on basic and we're gonna come up here and hit display profiling. Okay, one thing you can do is you can take this help and you can squish it off to the side. Okay, especially if you're on a laptop like I am, you need a little bit of screen space to, to get through this. Most of the time, you're gonna leave these settings at default, but just to kind of go through them, right here is your screen. If you're calibrating a multi-screen setup, uh, you'll have different screens set up here, so you're gonna select the one that you wanna be calibrating. Right here, we have white point. What white point is, is your color temperature. Now, D65 is the same as daylight, which is really good for editing and photography and video editing as well. Um, so that's the one that I would suggest is D65. Luminance is how bright your screen is and your calibration can actually account for that and, and tweak that for you. Um, one thing you can do is you can actually adjust this for different reasons. Um, if you wanted to adjust your screen's brightness to match print, that may not be something you wanna do all the time, um, but if, if that's something specifically you want to do, then 100 is probably a little bit better. A little less bright screen will help you match your prints a little bit better. But I'm gonna leave mine at 120. Okay, I'm gonna leave uh, the rest of these at default. I like this default gamma. Uh, the gamma is your contrast, essentially. Um, so if, if contrast is an issue in your calibration, this is something that you can adjust to have a milder contrast or maybe a heavier contrast, depending on what you need. Okay, I'm gonna leave that at default and I'm gonna go down here and hit next. So the calibration is gonna take these color patches and it's gonna display them full screen while the colorimeter records how, this, how the computer is interpreting each of these color patches. Before I get started, something that you wanna know is depending on what screen you're working on, you need to know if you have control, external control of the brightness and the contrast and sometimes RGB. Um, on a Mac laptop, I only have control over brightness. So that's all it's gonna give me an option for. But if you have a, a non-Apple display, um, an external display, uh, the software will ask you, do you if you have control over brightness, contrast, and, or RGB. Um, and it needs to be external control, okay? So if you have one of those, 
um, you'll be able to check boxes and tell it which ones you need. Um, you'll do that after you hit the start measurement here. So I'm gonna hit start measurement and it's showing me a little diagram of what to do. And what you do is you take this, okay, and it's asking me to pop this up, so this way, and then swing the cover to the back. Okay, once that happens, the computer recognizes that and the screen changes, and now it's asking me to put the device right on the screen, and you want it flush, so this one's all tipped up this one is flush against the screen. So right here you have a counterweight and this counterweight will help you balance it on your screen. Um, if you take this, there's a little button here that you can press and if you press it, it'll allow you to slide it up and down the line. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and put this on the back side of my computer. And sometimes it also helps if you tilt your screen a little bit, you want the device to be right in the middle of the screen and you want it to be as flush as you can. And then you can adjust this counterweight. I have it too long, so I'm gonna bring that up here. That way I can get my device nice and centered. Once that's done, I can go ahead and click OK here. And then over here, this is what I was talking about. This will display additional check marks. It'll say brightness, contrast, RGB, and you'll check which ones you have control over. This software knows that my screen only has control over brightness. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Next, and it's gonna do a quick brightness test. It's gonna take about 20 seconds, and it'll display some quick bright colors and some black and white, and then it's gonna ask me to adjust my brightness. Um, right here you have a scale. You wanna get this orange um, indicator down into the green, or you want to get as close to 120 luminance as possible. Right now I'm at 198. Now when you adjust this, you want to go a little bit slow because the software takes a second to catch up to the adjustments that you make. So I'm going to adjust my brightness down. Too much. Okay, I'm trying to get into the green area and I'm going to try to get to as close to 120 as possible. Sometimes with the slider you can get a little bit closer. Okay, looks like 116 is going to be the closest. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And when you do that, the software is going to start running through all those color patches. Now, this is going to take two to three minutes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let the software run through that. done, we get the diagram again telling us what to do. So I'm going to take this off of the screen. Okay, and it's asking me to flip the cover back over. And it says I can just set it off to the side. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to hit next. Okay, measurement successfully completed. Now this chart here is gonna show you what your screen is deficient in. We can see the top is what it was expecting, the bottom is what your computer showed. So it showed that my greens were too dark, it shows that my reds were too dark, um, and so on and so forth. And you can look through these color patches and you can see where you have issues. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next here. And the next thing you wanna do is you want to name your calibration. Now the default naming system is by the date and by the name of the screen. Um, this is a good system, that way you know when the last time you calibrated was. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. 
and I'm going to go ahead and hit save profile. Profile saved successfully and I'm going to hit OK and you're going to see a color shift. Okay. And one of the nice things about this software is if you don't see this image right away, you can click on this last icon right here. Um, and this will give you a before and after. So we can click on before and after. Okay, and then there's all these different options here that I can run through for all these different colors. Um, this is high key. I can do midtone, and I can do a before and an after with my midtones. One thing that um, a lot of screens have issues with is with reds, and so I'm going to come down to red, and we're going to take a look. Okay, not too bad. Mostly the brightness and the vibrance, um, and the color temperature. So it's a little bit cooler than it should be. So the calibration warmed things up. Okay, so reds weren't too bad. Let's check greens. Greens were an issue. Okay, so before, after. A lot of times the issues that you'll see are right in that gradient. You'll see it'll either be blocky on the before and it'll kind of smooth out on the after. You can also look at black and white photos if you want to. So high key black and white. That's before. That's after. A little blue, a little green in there a little bit. And that just kind of rounds things out. Okay. So all in all, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hit save profile one more time just to make sure already exists, so I can hit no. Um, just want to be safe, and I'll go ahead and hit home. And that's it. That's how you calibrate your monitor. The profile has been created, and it's installed on your computer. Some things to keep in mind, though, is if the calibration didn't quite work out the way you wanted it to, sometimes it's helpful to do a second pass. So just go back to the home page and just start the whole process over again. I hope you found that helpful and that you feel confident now to calibrate your monitor. I'd love to see what your results are. Take a screenshot of your before and after, leave it in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with a friend, and as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you in the next video. Calibrate your screen, come on, it's the calibration.